Hey guys, so today we'll be working on a Kacha 620M. This one doesn't build pressure and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So basically when you pull the trigger it just keeps flowing the water and pressure only builds when you open this up and then press the trigger and close it. So you've got to do that every time. So even if I hold it for a good 3-4 minutes like this, nothing will happen until I open the front here. And then close it. So I'll do it again. So in my case, with this machine having this problem, I can't use something like a surface cleaner or the bottle that washes your car, the, the foam bottle, because I don't have this adjustment to open it and then close it to build up pressure again. This is just straight direct, so when you pull the trigger on one of these, this is what happens and no pressure builds. You can basically just hold it, I've already bled the hose of all the air and this still happens. And if I leave the handle, uh, the trigger, it just keeps running like this until I open it. So that's the problem with this machine. We'll open it up and we'll show you what the possible problem could be and how to fix it. So this Kacha has three clips, one here, one here, one here. Take off the detergent tank. If this is the first time you're doing it, keep all your bolts organized so you know exactly where to put them back. There's two more bolts in there, don't forget that. Mark the bolts so you know exactly what torque setting to tighten them back to. So this part we're opening here is basically where the pressure switch sits, if you come up here and look. So this piston in here, or this rod, more than likely needs to be greased and it's seized up. So all this you see here is just a detergent tank, all the soap that was here, which leaked out when I pulled the tank off. So just take note of that. So basically what I did is took a set of pliers 
but before I did that I got a number seven deep socket. So deep socket put it in here sprayed some CRC just to lubricate it and just turned turn turn and pushed it up and down pushed it up and down just to get that seal free then took a set of pliers put it here and firmly pull upwards So here I'm just using some scuff pad, which is used in the automotive industry to scratch up paintwork, just to clean the inside surface here. And we're blocked up the bottom. It's just you can use whatever you want just to stop any debris from going down. That's just a ear plug. After you finish cleaning in there, before pulling this out, just make sure you vacuum up here and then, or maybe blow some air to get the dust out and then you can pull this off. So there's a little bit of corrosion on the inside of this, this valve body here. I can't really get anything in there, so I'm just going to use a soft uh, wire wheel. This is not too abrasive and I'm just lightly just going to go around on the inside. After you've done that, just vacuum it up. So we just pulled out the bottom o-ring, just using a pick tool, and now we'll just do the top. Because it is pinched, I don't know if you can see it, it's a bit pinched and it's worn. So preferably if you can get a replacement, get one. If you can't get the genuine o-rings, if your machine is too old, you can get a generic set like this and try and match it up as best you can. So this is generally the main problem. That rust that was cleaned inside here. So all that was cleaned and now just regreasing both O-rings. Generally you would not put this much grease but just due to the fact that this is the older machine need to make sure it's 100% lubricated properly so just putting it on there a little bit heavier than usual and we'll just get that lubricated nicely in there so this is a white type of a sticky grease if you get something similar to that or if you're unsure where to get it from just visit your local dealer you can kind of see the viscosity here it's a very tacky type of a grease so it doesn't get washed away with the water and that's quite an important fact and as you can see now we can push on it quite easily and it goes up and down it's not difficult like how it was before where it was, we really needed a lot of force to actually pull it out and move it up and down like that. And now it's moving a lot easier. And you also have another o-ring here and here. But in my case it looks fine, so I'm not going to touch those two. I'll just grease up this small rod here and we'll put this back on. So I greased up this o-ring here as well, put it down here, push down on it and yep. So now it's time for reassembly. Everything's reverse of removal, I'll show you in brief parts. This is where those marks come in use. So that you know exactly what torque to go back so that you don't over tighten them or something similar if you got the torque specs for the water blast that you're working on all well and good if not this is the by far the best and safest method
Notice we don't use an impact for final torque. It has to be done by hand. This ensures that you don't strip anything. So we've turned on the water, blend the system, then we've plugged it in and now we're going to test it out. And as you can see the problem is fixed. So I hope this helped you out. Um, if you've got one of these old machines don't throw it out. Basically on this machine before this problem I had changed the water seals, uh, the pressure seals, so the three of them. Bought it from Karcher. Uh, and I changed the oil seal cells as well and as you can see this was the second problem that occurred uh, a few months after that and basically that part had never been touched in this, this machine's lifetime so just with a bit of grease and some time you can get this machine going this in its day was probably around thousand dollars so you just saved yourself a thousand dollars on a beautiful machine and these old ones are actually very well built, full aluminium, no plastic components like the new ones. And it's not water cooled, so it's a very simple design, it's air cooled. Like I was saying before, if you got one of these old machines, it's worthwhile even if you see it on your local um, second hand website or eBay to buy it and play around with it. See if you can get it working. It's a very simple very simple pump and motor design it's not like overly complicated like the new ones which have bluetooth and um, have all these fancy features on the remote on the gun i mean on the lens so as you can see that's basically fixed the problem so that valve in that body wasn't moving up and down so it was getting stuck and basically us changing those two o-rings which looked quite worn out it's very old. I didn't buy this from Karcher. I just used any gener generic one that I had from a kit and it's working fine. As you can see it's a bit hard. So now I can go ahead and use all my other attachments as this wasn't possible before because it wasn't building up for sure. So thanks for watching guys. Please give us a like and a comment down below if this helped you out and don't throw your old machine out.